<laughs> Hello there. See, when people are learning computer science, they always learn things like sorting algorithms or uh, data structures. And uh, quite often they have to make up examples of you know, what you'd use that data structure for. Uh, and it's always things being modeled in the computer's memory. But I sometimes find that it helps using real world examples. And by real world examples, I don't mean putting stuff into the computer. I mean literally ways to sort things with your hands. Um, and I have a really good example uh, of some of a like a problem that I solved today using data structures and sorting algorithms. Okay, well, resistors, right? Electronic components. They come in all sorts of values. Oh my god, look at the size of that hand. Um, they can come, f you know, in uh, mega ohms, such as this. Or they can come all the way down to one ohm or two ohms, like this. With every value in between. Oh, hold on a second. Cat wants out. Is that right? I was dead talking to you. Is dead not talking to you? Oh no! Oh no, I rejected. Yeah, it's better. Okay, so I need a way to sort this. I can't just sort it into, uh, say, chunks because really I have a bazillion resistors from all sorts of ranges from like, you know, one to like millions. And it's chaotic. But one thing I realize is that they can be sorted. You can sort them uh, and you sort them in one dimension, which means that uh, any way that I sort them in a meaningful way would be linear in one dimension, and I thought, like, you know, a row. So I thought, okay, well, I'll store them in a row. And uh, and that's when I thought, I know, I'll just put the resistors down on a shelf in order of resistance. Um, so that's when I came up with the tube O resistance. That's right. This is sorted from smallest to biggest. So that's the data structure, right? But what about sorting algorithms? Well, this drawer here was full of just messy fucking bullshit, right? Resistors everywhere in no particular order. And this here was empty. Uh, so what I did is I used insertion sort. Uh, insertion sort is what you use when you are given a whole bunch of garbage and you want to put your, you know, the, you can only get one piece of data at a time and you want to put it into an already sorted array. Uh, and, you know, a sorted array can be an array of nothing or an array of one. So I started picking an array, uh, a, a resistor out of here and threw it in and it was sorted. I picked out a second resistor and I thought, well, is it greater or smaller? And I put it down in there. And so on for about five minutes. I was plucking resistors out and putting them in here. And, you know, unlike an array, um, I could actually just move these, you know, sideways, or move the whole thing down left if I needed more space on either side. But eventually I came to the last resistor and was like, oh shit, okay, where does it go? Mm, put it in there. Sorted using insertion sort. Now, I would use selection sort if I started at say one end here and I went I'm going to try and find the smallest resistor ever out of here and put it in the right place and then try and find the next smallest resistor. But that would have been a stupid idea. Stupid. Because how long would it have taken me to go through all of those resistors at every every time looking for the next biggest one. <laughs> so, yeah, learning which sorting algorithm to use helps a lot for all sorts of problems and uh, yeah, that's my uh, my uh, little demonstration. Let's, uh, let's watch an lady like a bum some more. Oh, I see, she's Moved on to her leg. Oh, look at that. He's licking their feeties.
Yes, licking babies. Say hello. Hello. It's right. Say bye. I'm Pippi Lee Vamp.